Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 85 of the I Rock Knits podcast. My name is Corey Eichelberger. Yes, it's a doozy. I married it. 12 letters long. But uh, it is a cold and blustery day here in Minnesota. Uh, late Sunday afternoon, the Vikings won. Yay! <laughs> that doesn't happen all that often. <laughs> But we do like to watch. I love watching Saturday afternoon University of Minnesota Gopher football and then Sunday afternoon Vikings football because it's prime knitting time, right? If you can kind of knit without looking, you can get a lot more done. I'm finishing up projects and trying to get some last minute design things done, as you all know well. What am I wearing today? I have on my Stonic Locker. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that right by Kate Davies. It was just a little easy to throw on over a long sleeved tunic I have um, that kind of coordinated. And so I just threw that on this morning because um, it's a little cold in the house. It's very, very windy here. I don't know if it's, it's been windy for three days, um, four days, I think in a row here. So we are supposed to have prettier weather on Tuesday, nicer weather. And then my husband's gonna run the turkey trot on uh, Thanksgiving day. Uh, we will have late after, late morning, early afternoon lunch, kind of. That's when we, Kylie and Stevie will come over um, and share that with us. And then they will go to his parents' house um, following that later in the afternoon. So they do two Thanksgivings and we will just do a small one for just the four of us. I'm going to start today with the Corey story to hopefully make you laugh. How about that? So my husband had to travel uh, for work this week, and he has not had to do that a lot recently. He was going to be gone Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So I was home alone. I didn't have to cook. I had lots of work to do. But I was going between my knitting chair and the office, my knitting chair and the office all day. I, I spend an inordinate amount of time on the computer right now. Uh, Shout out to all of my test knitters. I have been juggling about 42 test knitters recently. I have a big sock collection coming out in a couple of weeks um, with eight pairs of socks in one collection and there were four sizes for each pair of socks. So I needed a tester, at least one tester for each size for each pair, which meant, which meant at least 32 testers. And then in addition, I have a couple of cowls uh, hats and a mitt coming out too, um, part with that collection and then part separately. So I've been juggling testers and have they had to be patient and just hang in there with me. Uh, some days I read an email and then I'm like, okay, what what way to sock are they knitting? What, what sock are we on? Because it just all starts to meld together. I, I can't keep straight like what they're asking me, what page we are on. And, and so you guys know who you are. I could not do this without you. I did take on too much work. I did get sick and get way behind. Um, so none of that was planned, but they have had to be just with me. So anyway, I was working on the computer, I was doing all this you know, paperwork and they're sending me their testers reporting sheets. I have a whole sheet that they fill out for me when they're done to tell me if they found any mistakes. And I, I come back out to the chair because I'm, I'm trying to knit a third sample. And I this is the third one, so I'm, it's, I'm a little bored with it, right? I've been knitting and knitting and knitting. Um, but I, I wanted one more sample out of Indie Dyed Yarn to go with this other yarn that I'm using for the advent that's with the hand spun. So I wanted to have pictures of all the different looks, right? Uh, a more rustic yarn, the hand spun yarn, and then a superwash merino indie dyed yarn so that people <sighs> okay bud quiet dog bark uh so i was on the computer i came out and i couldn't find my phone now i had been gone that afternoon but i had used it because i use my calculator on my phone all the time so i'm always adding things up and i couldn't find it anywhere like I looked and looked and looked for probably a half an hour. I looked in the refrigerator because I thought, did you get something to eat? Did you get yourself a soda? Hey, I, I, I couldn't find it. And so I, I finally called my daughter on the home phone, which we have because we have internet through a home phone line. And I said, could you call me? I, my phone's on silent, but sometimes her phone will ring through because she's an emergency 
contact and I have a, you know, whatever it is, one of those. Anyway, so she called and called and called and it was ringing on my watch. Like I knew she was calling and I'm, I'm walking around and walking around and it's vi- my watch is vibrating and the phone is vibrating somewhere and I can't find it. So I finally call her back and I said, I, I can't find it. I don't know where it went. And she said, mom, do you know how to ping your phone on your watch? And I was like, no. And she's like rolling her eyes like, mom, when you call me with tech issues, it's such a pain. <laughs> And usually I Google it, but I couldn't Google, like, where's my phone? Well, I suppose I could have. I could have probably Googled how to find my phone. But anyway, you just push the little button and swipe up, and then there's a little phone with the little marks around it that pings your phone, and then it goes ping, ping, ping. I was like, oh, this is awesome. So I hit that little button, and I hear ping, ping, ping. But it kind of sounds like it's coming from my watch. So I'm holding my hand behind my back. And I'm walking and I push it and I'm walking and I can kind of hear it, but I don't know where it's coming from. I'm walking around. I have lifted up the recliner. I have moved the end table, the coffee table, because sometimes it falls in the, you know, side of the chair while I'm knitting. I often sit with a blanket over my knees. So this was at night. And so the blanket was there. So I, you know, I had thrown out the blanket and moved stuff around. Guess where my phone was? under the dog under the dog thanks dog thanks for laying down on top i'm going to put a picture in you can see the imprint of where my phone was in the carpet it vibrated on him about eight times and then i pinged it and he didn't move he never got up he was sleeping right in front of my chair i had carried some knitting in with me and dropped it on the floor and gotten the blanket up off the floor. So I must have dropped the phone. And then he came over to lay down because he follows me from room to room. So yeah, if you lose your phone, check under the dock. I just thought you might like a little laugh today because I I literally lost an hour of my day, (laughs) of my night. Ridiculous. So I finished watching the series, The Sinner on Netflix. Do not recommend. It was psychologically weird, very, um, it got really weird, especially in the third season. I don't know, it's a kind of a murder mystery following this cop and he's, he's kind of weird. He's got, you know, stuff going on in his life and with his daughter and her son and he's grandpa and he, uh, I don't, I don't know, it, uh, just, wouldn't recommend didn't love that so then I went back and watched I got all caught up on Grey's Anatomy then I got all caught up on The Good Doctor and I have not watched those shows for months so I had and that's what I love when I sit down at night and I can just knit and have something just play 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 play. so I got caught up on all those I've been watching Grey's Anatomy since it first came out so that's not hard to catch up on because you know the same it's the same thing year after year after year something bad happens at the hospital and then somebody saves the day but it, i find that fascinating and interesting and then so i uh i have a couple of new things to finish watching that i had started and and haven't finished and then husband and i went back to to watching yellowstone but we haven't we haven't sat down cuz he's been gone so we haven't been watching that anyway let's move on to the audiobooks of the week so this week I finished Alan Eskin's new book, The Stolen Hours. I love Alan Eskin's because he writes from a Minnesota viewpoint. And I love that. Um, if you've never read a book that's based where you live, try to find one. Google where to find a book that's based where you live because it, knowing the landmarks and the, the situations and the streets or the roads or whatever the landmarks are, oh, I just think that's so fun. But this is a continuation of a character that is introduced in previous books, but this is a standalone story. Um, Would it help to know the characters? Yes. So Lila and Joe are introduced in his first book where Joe is the protagonist of the first book and he is, you know, interviewing the old man, if you'll remember, in the nursing home and the old man had committed crimes. and, And so, but he meets Lila um, she moves into the apartment building and then they get together. So now, they, then in the next book, 
they're out of college and Joe gets a job at a newspaper. Now this is Lila's story and she's a new lawyer. And so for me, it that was fascinating too. So um, Lila Nash is on the verge of landing her dream job working as a prosecutor under the Hennepin County attorney. Hennepin County is Minneapolis and has settled into a happy life with her boyfriend. But when a woman is pulled from the Mississippi River barely alive, things in the office take a personal turn. The police believe the woman's assailant is local photographer Gavin Spencer, but the case quickly flounders as the evidence wears thin. Um, uh, trigger, trigger alert on um, rape and uh, sexual, you know, crimes um so if that is something that would bother you um it it was really good i i thought i knew who did it all the way through and then they couldn't they're trying to prove it and they can't prove it and and you kind of know i mean she, he leaves lots of a whole trail of breadcrumbs for you and then you're like how are they going to catch this guy how are they going to figure it out so i would say definitely and if you haven't read my favorite book of all time, the first one, Alan Eskins wrote. You got to go out and 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 read that one for sure, um, because I I really do enjoy his books. Then I read Underneath the Southern Sky, so I took a complete turnaround. This is by Christy Woodson Harvey. Two childhood friends discover that love and family can be found in unconventional ways in this timely moving novel. Recently separated, Amelia Saxton, a dedicated journalist, never expected that uncovering the biggest story of her career would become deeply personal. So this is a Southern novel of childhood friends who um, grow up together and should have fallen in love and gotten married and never did. And um, so it, it does have that um, kind of whimsical uh, boy and girl fall in love and get married you know aspect but it wouldn't it's not a romance um novel per se at in any way and they're they are fleshed out characters it was a really um easy listen it was fun to listen to i i enjoyed um kind of the mystery of what happened and um what's going on on this homestead that she grew up on i don't i wouldn't really call it a plantation um just a, a large house on a piece of land. Um, so yeah, I would I would recommend that one too. And then the last one I read takes a real turn toward the dark. It's called Good Girl, Bad Girl by Michael Robotham. Robotham. And he's a psychological mystery writer, really popular. You may have read other things by him. Um, this was uh, e weird at first. I was like, oh, I'm not going to listen to this um, because they introduced the, the girl and they're, you know, they're psychological the kids who have had behavior problems and issues and they're in this home and um, where they're, you know, they're being, it's, it's like a psychiatric facility kind of and they, you know, and, and I don't know, I just, I was kind of turned off a little bit in the first chapter as it seemed weird and then it got really good like it's just because I don't listen to a lot of psychological thriller stuff because it can get in my head um, and I definitely can't listen right before I fall asleep I have to look at something like a, a knitting podcast before I fall asleep that's true of when I watch TV too if I've watched something that's really intense and ugh, then I have to put on something <laughs> that's lighter to put that to be the last thing in my head but a girl is discovered hiding in a secret room in the aftermath of a terrible crime. Half starved and filthy, she won't tell anyone her name or her age or where she came from. Maybe she is 12, maybe 15. She doesn't appear in any missing persons file and her DNA can't be matched to any identity. Six years later, still unidentified, she is living in a secure children's home with a new name. When she initiates a court case demanding the right to be released as an adult, forensic psychologist Cyrus Haven must determine if Evie is ready to go free. But if she is unlike anyone he's ever met, fascinating and dangerous in equal measure. So it's the story of Cyrus and Evie. He decides, you know, her fate, whether or not she can live outside the home. Um, and she's been present at a horrific crime but then stayed in the house and didn't leave afterwards and they eventually find her um so it you know it's dark it's eerie but not it's not 
grotesque and it's not violent. Um, I, I couldn't stop listening. I just listened and listened and listened. I really, I got interested in the characters and I thought, so not my type of book, not something I normally recommend, but good girl, bad girl. I, I would say if you like that kind of thing, like mi solving the mystery of this girl and what happened to her and um, kind of the psychology of the mind, um, man, really good, okay? So three, three books. The problem I'm having with Libby is they're delivering all my books at once. So I'm getting, this book is ready for you, this book is ready for you. And so I'm borrowing, 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 and then I have this deadline, I feel like I have this hour deadline, right? Like you have nine more days and this is eight hours to listen. You have 12 more days and I'm just not getting, so I, I got, I borrowed five books and I was like, okay, I only have two, two weeks to get through all these. So I've been listening a lot more than watching things or I'm carrying it with me even more to get the books done because I don't want them to go back without. So I need to figure out how to spread out my, <laughs> I can, you can always delay it, but then I feel like if I delay it for 10 days, I'll be without a book because I didn't have anything and now I have to wait three more days for it to come through. So I have to get better at that scheduling part. Otherwise I love Libby because it's free. So I'm gonna let you in on a little secret in order to share the recipe of the week. My new sock collection that is coming out with Suburban Stitcher in December um, is called the Pairs of Socks Collection and it's based on Pears the Fruit. So we're doing a little play on words and so each one is named after a different type of pear. And I had the photo shoot and I had to buy a bunch of pears so that we could put them in a kind of a bowl. We could lay them around. We could take the pictures outside with some pears. And so I had uh, Bartlett, Andrew, Bosque, and Concord pears <laughs> by the bushel. <laughs> and I've done this twice because I did half the patterns, the DK versions first, and now we just did all the fingering versions. And so I had to buy pears again. So this is the second time I've done pears at the grocery store. And I had all these leftovers and I said, I need to make something with pears. So I went in and was Googling, what can I make to use up a bunch of pears? And I wanted to make pear cake because it sounded delicious, but Ross was not a fan. He was like, we don't need to eat cake. So I said, well, how about pear cinnamon and pear oatmeal cookies? And he was like, yeah, that sounds good. So I made these, they're by Jennifer Drummond. Um, and she is peanutbutterandpeppers.com which is really interesting. I think she was looking for P words, but anyway. So uh, it, this is just a traditional kind of oatmeal cinnamon recipe. And like, instead of having oatmeal raisins, it's oatmeal and pears. So you just get this, you dice the pears up, you peel them and dice them, and then you fold them in. And so it's, you know, if you don't like tradition, like a lot of people don't like raisins. And, but I would say that the texture of the pear gets really soft and you it's not like you feel like you have something in there. I mean, you get a little burst of fruit, but it isn't like a raisin, right? Where you, that can have a texture for people. And so they were, they were really good, really moist, a very wet cookie when I dropped them on the sheet. I thought, oh, these are gonna run all over, but they did not. Um, so it's, and, and they're fairly healthy. A healthy cookie because you make them with coconut oil and coconut sugar if you like um, if you don't have coconut sugar you can make them with brown sugar uh, so coconut oil coconut sugar an egg vanilla baking soda salt cinnamon um, then they recommended whole wheat which I was out of I usually have but I didn't have um, three quarters of a cup of whole wheat flour so I couldn't use that and then a one and a half cups of oats and then a, a cup of pear, which I use two pears, uh, cored, diced, and peeled, just, you know, diced up. And then it's just in the oven, it made two pan, two sheet pans, so not a ton of cookies, you know. And you can also make them gluten-free by using gluten-free oats and flour. And, you know, it, it, you make, it, it calls, it says it makes 18 cookies. I think mine made a few more. I scooped them with a, a cookie scoop, but I think I got a few more. And then they they stayed really moist in the container. When I shut the container and, and opened it, the next day I felt like they were really moist. Like I would have liked them to, to maybe just dry out a little bit. Um, but I think that's just the pear, right? Like the, the pear has so much 
water content. So anyway, I thought, well, I'll just share with everybody because uh, who ever thought you could make cookies with pears? Then we ended up eating pears, and then I threw a couple pears away because they just got too far gone before we we got them all eaten. But they served their purpose for my photo shoot. <laughs> so you could be all looking for that. If you have not signed up for my newsletter on my website, I know I beat this, but I only send you a newsletter when I have a new pattern come out, and it gives you a coupon code so you can get it for cheaper because I want people who support me and people who watch the podcast to get a discount so just go over you'll only get and you know I've had a lot this fall but now I'm going to go into a period of months where there will be no newsletters because I'm thinking there won't be any new patterns because I just need to take a break all right let's talk about the sweater of the week this week I have had this sweater done for a little while and just haven't been able to share it it is a uh, top-down raglan worsted weight so works up really quickly but I got my kit from Knit Circus. So this is the Ringmaster colorway. They give you the black yarn and then the colors to fade the rainbow going down um, in the different, the kit that you can purchase. It's worked up on a size eight needle, 16.5 stitches to four inches. So super quick knit. I love the fit of a raglan. Not everyone does. I understand that. This came out in November of 2015 and then I didn't buy the kit till much later. The pattern is offered by Christina Ghirlanda for $6.50 which is about $7.70 um, US. So it's a European adult A-line crew neck fitted in the round long sleeve one piece. The sizes run from extra small to 2X, which is a bust circumference of 34 to 51. So it doesn't go up to that 60 kind of mark now that we're all looking for. And it is meant to be worn with two to four inches of positive ease. Making this in leftovers would be super simple, right? If you have worsted weight leftovers, you could just stripe them in with any you could purchase or if you have you know, a gray or a cream as your background color, you could just stripe it. And you could just stripe the neckline, you could just do it solid, you could just stripe across the middle or just stripe the bottom, just stripe the sleeves. There's so many options with this pattern and it really does fit well. So I would highly recommend um, the pattern and the kit uh, if you're looking for something that looks like a Cory sweater, <laughs> 100%, right? completely all right I am going to share because we're on sweaters I'm going to share what I purchased <laughs> I decided to, to share this all with you so that if you need a crazy Christmas sweater I have one that I got at Target 10 years ago and it has a sheep in the front and says fa la 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 Felice Navidad Felice F-L-E-E-C-E -E, has a sheep but I've worn it, I literally wear it every Christmas for, you know, several times. And I, I was thinking, gosh, I should knit a Christmas sweater. And for some reason, I, I got a thing um, from Kohl's that they had this. And I was like, that is my ugly Christmas sweater. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear that just constantly. It's a cardigan. It has little bells on their hats. It's a little obnoxious. It has gold glitter ribbing trim. If, if you can't see that, it's shiny, it's glittery. And um, I just thought it was super cute. It is acrylic and it was originally priced at $50 and I got it on sale. So if you have Kohl's cash, um, I think it was $32.99 maybe, something like that. But if I wear it, you know, every Christmas and a couple of times throughout the month, and then I can always pass it on to somebody and it can become their their horrible Christmas sweater. I just thought it was it was worth it. The sheep really are cute. These are fluffy ones. They're like they have like little cottony <laughs> fluff and then these are like the knitted acrylic fabric. So I thought, well, everyone will get a kick out of <laughs> a kick out of that. So today I have a new pattern to share. I'm very excited to announce that I did a collaboration with Stacy of Mustache Yarns. Stacy, who's known for her self-striping sock yarn and her 24 stripe colorways and her school of rock and her um, 
themed socks that everyone loves. She, you know, she has co constantly has updates um, on her site and I have always loved her yarn, but mostly when people want to do self-striping yarn, they want to just make vanilla socks. And so I, I wasn't thinking, gosh, I want to do a design collaboration with Stacy because I, I don't want to put a pattern on her socks. So I, I had this idea to make these mittens. I had shared it with Amber, oh, I don't know, a year ago maybe. And um, I had knit up a, a part of them and Amber said, oh my gosh, those are gonna be so fun. And who are you gonna get to dye them? And I said, I don't know, I have to ask someone to dye the variegated yarn for me. And I decided to reach out to Stacy. Stacy is not usually known for her variegated yarns, but she has done variegated yarns in her past. So let me show you my new set. So here's the hat and here are the mittens. I just think they're so cute. So this is called the Churchill Avenue Mittens and Hat Set. But you all know, if you've been with me for a while, that I grew up on Churchill Avenue in Sioux Falls. And I tell the story at the beginning of the pattern that in the 1980s, my father got together with a bunch of other neighbors and decided to join the Christmas celebrations in South Dakota where you would put all your family in a car and you would make hot chocolate and the kids would be in their pajamas about eight o'clock at night and you would go drive down the different roads that had been designated as decorated for the holidays. So I live on a double, lived on a double block. So there were four city blocks, but just two, um, it's weird, but um, blocks of houses that all have churches in front of them because we were on Churchill Avenue. But there was also Santa Claus Lane, Reindeer Lane, Lollipop Lane. So the houses in front of Lollipop Lane would all have a giant cellophane lollipop for each of the children in the house or the mother and father. Um, the reindeer lane, the Santa would be on the roof of one house with his sleigh, and then they would have Christmas lights and there would be reindeer on the next house and the next house. And as a child, looking out the window at those Christmas lights, I love Christmas lights anyway. I have my whole house outlined in red for, um, the, for Christmas. Um, and he just came and put our lights up. We have a local kind of a guy that comes around, a young guy, he works a full-time job, but he does it on the side. And he puts our lights up for us. And um, not all my neighbors now are using him as well. And so when you have someone like that who can, they, um, what do you call it? When you put the two ends of the light together, they, you know, so you don't have to have a ton, of, a ton of cords. He's electrical by nature so that they can kind of string them together. And um, so he can put those up and he's got the big 30 foot ladder to get up on the points of the house or whatever. And so everybody's been using them. So my corner is highly decorated, which I love. But someone in the neighborhood, you usually have a speaker in front of their house and they would play Christmas music. And then you would turn your lights off on your car as you joined the cars going up the street and then you could see the you know the decorations better and then you would crack the windows just a little bit so you wouldn't get all fogged up inside and you could hear the sound uh, it's just a memory i have so i really think that this looks like the christmas lights and the street the snowy street and that's what i base this on if you look closely at the mittens Stacy did such an amazing job that the Christmas lights that stack on one another don't like you, there's not pooling going on. So when I came around, there's a purple, a red, a green, a purple, a red, a green. There's a yellow and a blue and a, like they're they just that's so variegated that you can really see the differences to make it look like the Christmas lights. So this is a, a medium mitten. And I did the top of the thumb and the tip uh, in plain, so you didn't have to do, it is color work technically. So it's two white, two color, two white, two color for the whole thing. And I did a little Pico, oh, my light is blowing this out. I did a little Pico edge at the bottom. So I'm hoping you can see that. So there are little holes around the edge. So yard over knit two together all the way around it. So you get this really nice little Pico bottom 
there. And you also get it on the hat. There's a little Pico trim here. And I'm gonna put a video in, because here's my idea. You're going to put a little Christmas light up ne necklace in there and it's gonna stick out of those little yarn over holes so that the lights will shine. You turn your light up necklace on and you tuck it in the back and then you can go to you know Christmas or a festive event outside or something that you're doing and you would have the little Christmas light up necklace that you can get at you know Party City or Joann's or Michael's or uh, Amazon online and you can stick those out if you want to be very over the top. And I really love how the crown came out. I just think it's super fun. It's like all the little snowy streets all came together. So kits are available as of Tuesday in Stacy's shop. This is the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, the 23rd of November, and she will have kits available with the cream, which is called It's Only Natural, and then the Noel colorway, which is the speckled yarn. None of my testers had access to the yarn early because we were not planning because I was so far behind. This was supposed to come out at the beginning of November and uh, and Stacy was like, it's fine. We'll get it out when we can. And she does another Christmas collaboration. So you can go to her website and get your yarn, but she is not shipping before Thanksgiving. She will ship immediately after she has plans. And so you can put in your order, but it will not ship on Tuesday, just so you know. It's two days, it's Thanksgiving. I wanna honor that for her and let her have time with her family and not have to be uh, shipping. But all of my testers did worsted weight yarn and variegated. And so we have blue and gray, and I will show you the other set. This is the first set I made which was not with her yarn. This was just an old variegated skein I had. See, it had a lot of gray in it, so it's not as vibrant, but they're still super cute, right? And in order to make the thumb work well, I had to offset the, the line up. See, so they don't go up in straight lines, so you make your increases and then you get a little checkerboard on the thumb. But I don't think you notice when you're looking at the mitten like this. It checkerboards a little bit before. See, it checkerboards right there, but then it gets normal. So it's just a really fun set. Churchill Avenue Mittens and Hat, and your discount is to put both items in your cart on Ravelry, and a deduction will also already be taken for $5 off. So anyone who's watching this will get $5 off and you will just put them both in your cart. By doing that, Ravelry will automatically sense that, the, sense that there should be a discount. So here is my pattern. There's beautiful Joanna. And these are my patterns. But I know that a lot of people are new to this channel. They're new to me and they don't realize that I write a checklist pattern. So most of my patterns are written for advanced beginner and up and I want to make it easy enough for people to be able to follow the pattern line by line, check off each row, and that way if you do set it down with the intent to come back tomorrow but you don't come back for three weeks, you'll know where you're at in the pattern. If you are a more accomplished knitter and you don't need that, then you don't need to print my entire pattern. But see here how every line is written out all the way down for you to check off. You don't have to check them off if you don't want to, but I, I'll provide check boxes for people so that you can use them if you want. Here are the little church and the house. This is the, the picture that my mom could find before the snow fell when my dad put the um, house and the church out early one year. So it, they are a lot prettier, but they have the little parsonage because they're the first house on the corner. And then those are the churches on Church Hill. And then I have a little, um, tip in the how to make your picos more pronounced by putting sticking a needle in and just kind of pulling them up when you're blocking them so that when you lay them to dry your picos will will stick up a little bit so we took a picture of that so i really try to do a good job of writing out in detail in each of my patterns except my very earliest ones they have now become checklist patterns so they are longer to print 
always check which pages you want to print before you start. Because if you don't want to print out this page and you just want to look at it on your computer, you don't have to, right? You can just leave it. It's always the last page of the pattern that gives you more detailed information or um, some extra pictures close up so that if you have like a question, you can go, oh, I don't understand. Can I look at it more closely? You can look on that last page. But other than that, you should be really set to go and you can get a pair of mittens or a hat for knit up for Christmas gifts or wearing year round. I don't think that the hat necessarily screams Christmas, but it has the memory for me of Christmas. So also um, the finished measurements for the hat are for uh, size 16, 18, 20, 22, and 24. So there are five sizes in the hat and that should get you from pretty small child all the way up to a uh, large adult head. And then the mitten patterns are also going in five sizes and they are for hand circumference of about four, six, seven, eight, and 10, roughly. It's a, they, you know, there's some halves in there, but, um, and you wanna have as much ease as you want. What I found is I knit them to fit my hand and then when I blocked them, they got just a little bit bigger. And a lot of people don't block mittens or socks, they just stick their hands or feet in them and wear them as they go. So that is absolutely your prerogative. But um, I do like my mittens to fit, you know, fairly tightly and snugly so that I don't have a lot of extra material if I'm driving, um, especially in Minnesota with cold, cold steering wheels. So I hope you like it. I would love it if you would purchase the pattern to support me in that way, um, to say, you know, thank you for the podcast or gift it to a friend. That is always a way, I think, especially at this time of year. I did give patterns um, away to veterans again this year. Um, I will give any veteran who watches my podcast or follows me on Instagram any patterns of their choice for free anytime throughout the year. You just email me with the list of the patterns that you would like. Um, it is one way that I can thank people for their service to our country, and I do that year round. And I don't often have that many take advantage of it. So don't feel shy. Just send me an email and say, I'm a veteran. You don't have to prove to me that you're a veteran. I mean, most people tell me, they'll say I was a nurse in the you know, army or I was a medic or I was a whatever. They will tell me I'm, you know, captain or, and um, I will send them the patterns. But um, you can gift patterns on Ravelry. So at this time of year with Thanksgiving coming up, and I know in Canada, they already had Thanksgiving, you could gift a pattern to a friend and just say I'm thankful for you and I like this hat and whether or not they ever choose to knit it it's a something that you did for them it's you know an easy way to gift something and then support me so on the the theme of special things I, I want to tell you and kind of the theme of Christmas I know that some of you have never seen this before because you're new to my channel you're new to my design work so this is my chim chimney hat and this is the first pattern I ever published on December 9th of 2016. So I'm coming up on my five year anniversary of the first pattern that I ever put out. And this is still a very popular pattern. It is a uh, little chimney bricks. It is a square topped hat. And then it has little garland with the little Christmas lights in it. So that pattern is available on Ravelry, Etsy, Lovecrafts on my website, like everything else. And then I have the old fashioned stocking hats. And so I thought I should bring those and show them today because I know people are looking for gift knitting. So this is the worsted weight version of my long, um, of my stocking hat in the short. And then here's the worsted weight version. Let me turn the brim up in the long. And then I also have it in fingering in the long version. So if you have a sock, a fingering sock weight, um, skein of yarn, you can make the long stocking hat. You could make it in a solid color, but I thought this, this was really fun. It pooled and then it kind of micro striped. So this is the fingering weight version. So that pattern has fingering short, long, worsted short and long. So you can make either one. This is the very original first one I ever made out of worsted weight and I just used different worsted skeins. And I put a big, you know, this is one of those stocking hats that you can wrap around your neck as a scarf and keep yourself warm. 
as well. So those are also, the, that's, this one's called Old Fashioned Stocking Hat and it would show up um, under my designs also. Um, so I thought, well, I'll share all of that because I had them out because one of the local yarn stars had a holiday night and they borrow them every year and then they put tags on them and people come and look at the samples. And so they were on the dining room table and I thought, well, I can share those because I'm sharing my new Churchill Avenue mitts. So, all right, then let's talk about something I saw on the knit internet. This is a new, uh, a new segment for me and I saw these socks and I think I shared them last time gingerbread socks they're by candy shop yarns on Etsy a little gingerbread on the heel you that's where you can get the pattern as well but I also saw a a new pair so I'll put those in and this designer has some really clever sock patterns her name is Emma and she has Christmas trees and snowmen that is something that I've never seen before. If you wear your socks that will show at Christmas, that's the only thing that I was thinking is like, that's a lot of work to put into a sock that you would have to wear with a skirt or dress or cropped pants in order for people to see, unless you rolled your pants up. But they're just darling. So I thought, oh, I have to share those with my viewers because yeah, that is creativity, right? Out of the box, something I saw on the internet. If you see something really interesting, will you tag me and send it to me? I'm on Instagram a lot. I spend, a, I take breaks every hour and scroll on Instagram and in, in, in Ravelry to kind of see what's new and hot out there. So I often will see things, but if you see something super interesting and you think that it's completely different from anything we've seen before, share it with me, tag me, let me know, and I'll share it on the podcast. I do have a tip or trick this week. This comes from someone I follow on Instagram, a friend in Minnesota here named Susan Rainey. And Susan uses a bead behind her buttons to use as a shake. And I thought that was just fascinating. So this is the button and this is the bead. So when you put a button through a buttonhole and you have thicker yarn, the button gets pulled all the time. You have to either wrap yarn around underneath there or have a shank button that you don't pull through too tightly. That's why you get kind of, you know, pulling around the buttonhole area. And so I just thought that that was, I have seen someone do this before years ago, but had completely forgotten about it. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. You can just thread a button underneath there or a bead, a tiny little button, and that will provide the gap you need in order for once you button it, your worsted weight or iron weight sweater to fit in there. So it's not pulling. It's not pulling up on that fabric below and you know, kind of distending things there. So I thought that was clever and a great picture. And I didn't have to take <laughs> I didn't have to take it. I could just share it all with you, but it is not my idea. Uh, so I have one more little thing to share. I have been using these responsible products. That's the company name. They're compostable sandwich bags, gallon bags. They are more expensive, but they will disintegrate in, you know, a landfill. And so they are Ziploc top. And I had, you know, two sandwich bags and a gallon zips and whatever, all everything you need they have there. And they, they're they very strong, they're, you know, tough, and but they will compost down, which I, I'm trying to do my best because I still love a Ziploc bag and I don't want to give up plastic and I don't want to use wax paper to wrap up my sandwich or whatever. So I have a discount code. Because I reordered, you can also go out to Responsible Products and you can use a discount code called Kareen847. Kareen is my first name. I'll put it on the screen here. You can get 20% 20 off using Kareen847. And so I thought, I'll share it. They sent me an email and they said, if you want to tell any family or friends, which I never do, I never would send somebody a code and say, hey, buy this. I don't get anything for it. I'm just offering 20% off to you if you'd like to try it. So um, 
It comes in this 50 sandwich bag pack and I don't use them very often. So they last me a really long time and I will often reuse Ziploc bags and you know sandwich bags and stuff. If I bring you know something out of the refrigerator and the inside of the bag is not messy, I'll use it again. I'll put fruit in it the next time or a cookie or whatever I'm trying to save on the counter. So I thought, you know what? I, I do care about our environment and our planet. I do think it's going to hell in a handbasket. Um, I think we have way too much stuff in landfills. I think we're not careful. I think we put it out the end of our driveway and we assume it goes away and it doesn't. It's there to stay. And so I, I would just like to do my part in some way, shape or form. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna share that coupon code today. I just have one more thing to remind you all of about. about. Um, there is a knitting exchange group on Ravelry and it has been taking care of itself for several months because I have been inattentive to it. But people are posting projects that they have abandoned, whips that they cannot finish, sweaters and items that do not fit that they would like other people to take off their hands. I have just cleaned up the thread and deleted any of the posts that have already been accounted for so if somebody sold something or they mailed something out or they is no longer available I have deleted those all out and I've only left those things that are still available in that thread but if you haven't checked it in a while you might want to go over and check and see and if you have some things that you have been thinking about getting rid of sweaters you don't wear shawls you've never worn um, unfinished objects uh, you know whips that you're never going to finish there's a uh, babe, there was a baby blanket in there that someone had gotten from a friend that needed to be finished and the last few posts people have been just asking for either the yarn money in return or um, postage to get it to the new person in a skein of, of yarn so there's some swapping going on but I have just not had the brain power to keep up with that thread or post on Instagram. But going forward now, I'm putting it in my schedule so that at least one day a week, I will take any new posts and put them on Instagram. If you are interested in being a an administrator or a helper of that knitting exchange, it would just be a matter of deleting things out that were already sold, or if people would go ahead and delete things once they're sold, um, and then taking the pictures that are on the actual pages and putting them on Instagram. I tried to work that out with someone and we couldn't get it going because I couldn't figure out how to share the account on Instagram. So if someone knows how to let someone else into their account on Instagram, which we tried to do, but then I had to prove it each time she wanted to go on. I don't know, there was just a glitch that happened there. And so I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to get help with that little piece because I just, I haven't had time. And it is it has been just moving along. There were pages full of stuff that people were offering and other people have taken it. So I'm gonna include right now some of the pictures of the things that are still available so that you can see what's left over there. And then I will try to every other time on the podcast mention this so that we can keep that thread going and so that lovely items that need to be shared with other people don't sit in a pile in your corner or in a project bag forever and ever. Amen.
I want to thank all of you. I am thankful for you. You matter greatly to me. I have a podcast of about 4,000 followers, and some of you are completely and totally loyal. You always watch. You always comment. I love reading your comments. Um, I am not commenting back as much right now because I am trying to use my time more wisely to keep myself from getting stressed out about how far behind I got. The sock collection was supposed to come out in September for Socktober. Uh, the Christina hat was supposed to come out. The, the Churchill Avenue <laughs> mittens were supposed to come out two weeks ago. And I, I just, because I got behind and then we moved the, the sock collection that also has a hat and a cowl. So it's a 10 pattern collection to December, but then that piled up my October and November because they didn't get done. So I have been um, stressed. I know I say I'm busy, but I'm not that busy. There are a lot of people in the world working a lot harder than I do. I just had a lot on my plate and that I want to do a good job for designer for designing for people when I ask them if I could work with their yarns and they so graciously said yes. First it was Chelsea Yarns and then it was Mustache and then it was Suburban Stitcher. And I reached out to all three of them, probably not what I should have done, and just said, hey, um, anytime and then over time they all got back to me eventually and were like yes okay i'm ready now's a good time and then i said yes to all of them and then was out of commission for two months so i'm just so thankful that you're here and that you show up um, and watch me every week i do want to say i got a note from someone the other day and she listens to my podcast she's not big on sitting down and watching video podcasts and so she just listens on her phone and in that, if that is a better option for you to be to, if you're more of an audio podcast person, I thought I should post about that because you don't have to see everything I hold up. If I talk about it and you're really interested, you could go look at it on Ravelry later. So that would be an option for people to actually go and just listen to a podcast when they're out for their walk. If you find that you don't have time to watch all your podcasts, maybe while you're in the car driving instead of you know, listening to music or being up in your brain, thinking about everything you have to get done while you're driving, like me. <laughs> so uh, I'm hoping that in a couple weeks, this whole sock collection, this whole pairs of socks and will be done. And the new um, advent calendar cowl will be out for all of you to see. Um, if you haven't gone over to Fleece and Fiberworks, please do that as well. Um, she still has a couple of hand spun kids left. All of the one kind of fleeces were sold out, I think. Maybe there's one left. Um, she had two options. I don't know enough. I think one was CVM. There was Polypay. Anyway, there are kinds of fibers that you could choose um, from and you could get, and those all shipped and the pattern goes live December 1st because um, we're kind of keeping it a secret because they're going to get pictures in their kits and I didn't want people to open their kit and have already seen the idea behind the cowl that I designed. So we're kind of keeping that a secret. So I just, I put it up on uh, Ravelry at, with just the pictures of the colorway choices that you have, the brights or um, the lights. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited to get these last 10 patterns <laughs> Finished up, I have the last, the fourth sock is finishing completion on test knitting and then we send it to layout and get it laid out and pictures are all taken and photographs are chosen and so the, the ending, but there will be a big discount um, in the email for, the, for that. So if you're a sock knitter, I don't, haven't done a lot of socks. There are four DK weight socks that also have a fingering option. So there will be eight patterns and you can choose DK fingering both neither and just get the hat and the cowl because you don't knit socks so try to cover all the bases in all the ways um, but until next time thank you so much for being a part of my life for letting me share and blabber blabber on every single week and a thank you for all of you on Thanksgiving Day as I gather um, in a small tiny group with my family my daughter and her boyfriend here at our house where we will just have um, just kind of the easy 
not a lot of desserts, not a lot of extra food. We try to really limit how much we make because we, we make everybody's favorites, right? So we'll have rice pudding. <laughs> I've shared that recipe. Um, I love rice pudding. Uh, no one else loves it as much as I do, but uh, so we're gonna go and get our turkey tonight. As soon as I'm done with this, we're heading into the grocery store because we don't want to go in Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday this week. And we haven't done it because we weren't sure when, if the kids were coming and when. So we kind of waited to see if we needed how much turkey we needed and all the fixings. So we're gonna run into the grocery store and get that quick. And we took some soup out of the freezer, leftover soup for supper so I don't have to cook. <laughs> then I'll get this edited either later tonight or tomorrow. I hope that you are able to get together with small groups of your family and that you are careful and safe and um, find someone who can be with you um, because I think we all need that. We all need uh, at least to talk to family. We will be talking. My family is gathering um, in South Dakota, but we're choosing not to go. Um, and. Um, they're not coming here. Usually in the past, we've kind of gotten together, but uh, I will Zoom, uh, FaceTime with many of them and, and try to just share, you know, feelings of thank thankfulness for my family and that we've gotten through it this far, not without loss in our family, but a lot of you have shared um, things with me about your families and um, the closeness that you have and some of you, the estrangement. And that can be, this can be a really hard time of year. So love on your neighbor. Will you look around you and see if there are people who are alone or suffering or lonely um, or don't have good connection because we all need someone to lift us up a little bit now and then, right? I will try to um, see you in two weeks. Um, See how that goes the new another new pattern collection i'm hoping diane is moving into a new house she's supposed to move in the monday after thanksgiving she's got to get her dye studios set up we have pushed this off quite a bit we really want it to come out she's going to do pre-orders so you can start watching a uh, suburban stitcher out of texas um, for those to go live the uh, I'm, I'm thinking december 7th ish 6th or 7th that's what we were shooting for but you know she's building a house and moving her family and living you know her house sold she had to move out she's dying in her parents garage um on a much smaller scale if i have to push it off i will um we would really like to get it out here because i delayed it and then and it wouldn't have been delayed but then she had to delay it so I'm going on and on, as, as I want to do. <laughs> Until next time, keep it colorful, keep your fork, buy the gravy. That's a good one for this time of year. You'll never regret ripping back. No green bananas. Waddle on. I love you all. Come in for your hug. Just know that I'm sending good feelings and thankfulness for you. And I'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye.